धन्यवाद श्री सुरेश प्रभु थैंक यू मैडम वी हैव बीन डिबेटिंग दिस इशू फॉर ऑलमोस्ट थ्री डेज नाउ एंड आई वो से दैट ऑल्सो थ्री नाइट्स बाय नाउ वेन आई एम कॉल्ड अपॉन टू स्पीक and it is not a coincidence that we are discussing the special session during the night part of the day also because when we started our independence and mr jawalal nehru or then prime minister said that he wanted to redeem his pledge with destiny that was also midnight of 1947 but probably that midnight was filled with lot of hope though we had several problems the 1997 when we are again meeting after 50 years we again have lot of problems but very little hope and that's the difference when we got independence since the hope was there we thought all the problems that we thought are the problems would be solved because we are now got independence but madam after this 1997 when we are dawning into this new year of 50 years we feel that our problems are yet to be solved not only we have to solve but they are really worse compounded in different forms madam the general deterioration that we see is all pervasive just to take an example in 1947 our neighboring country sri lanka a very small little island was not even playing test cricket but in 1997 they have taken a great pride in saying that we had not only defeated india but has scored so many runs that we never scored in the test cricket against india so this general deterioration madam really makes us to introspect and to find out what really has gone wrong where we have gone wrong madam certain certain human related life index criterion when we try to compare them with not only our neighboring countries in asia but also with some sub saharan countries we are really not progressed on that count also in fact the time magazine which recently came out with a special issue to commemorate india's 50th year of independence has given some startling facts about this human life index we are really not gone ahead of or in that period certain sub saharan countries have progressed better than india and we are we are deteriorated in those that area also madam the net result of all this is our youth is feeling really frustrated all these years they thought that changing one political party and voting for another is a solution to the problems that the country was facing he has tried many alternatives but yet the problems are not yet solved and it is a very dangerous trend that we are witnessing now many youths are now turning to so called mafia only in the hope that the justice will be delivered justice will be dispensed with not by the system that he thought was a democratic one but now this system will give him the justice that he is really looking for madam this is a time to really draw the balance sheet of the country and i think we really have a more liabilities on liability side and then the assets do i am not saying that asset side is totally blank madam one of the point that we should really ponder over is a heavy debt burden that our country is having when we became independent we were not having many assets on our balance sheet but of course our debt also was not substantial but today we have got a very burgeoning 92 billion dollar of foreign exchange foreign debt and also more than 364 million 4 lakh crores of domestic debt which is a really a daunting figure So every new Indian who is born is born with a date on his head, and now he says that I am born in a free India, but with a date on my shoulder, which I have to carry for the next generation to follow. Madam, the debt burden is also putting a tremendous strain on the interest of the interest that a country has to pay. Madam, last year, this current year, we are going to pay 103.9 percent of our fiscal deficit is on account of the interest. So we are now borrowing the entire amount, or more than what we are. really paying as interest is being borrowed by the government and so the only amount that we borrow is to pay the interest which really is a very very serious matter on the other side madam very startling and also very worrying point is 30% of our population in the higher income bracket is consuming more than 53% of our private consumption expenditure and the lower 30% is only able to get not more than 42% so this is something which i think is a very startling and this is what we have got in this last 50 years of independence madam any other sector which we should have made us happy but even on health is the same story we thought that we have mastered the diseases we have 
conquered these diseases. But those old diseases which we thought we have conquered are again rearing the head in this 50th year of independence, which is again a very worrying time, madam. The education is providing us degrees, but not jobs. It is giving us knowledge, but not enlightenment. And on that front also, the situation is very dismal. Madam, we always take pride in saying that we have got a highest, second highest trained manpower in the world that is there in India. And it's a very great pool of resource which is available to us. But this huge resource is unemployed in great degree. It is finding jobs. It is trying to use the creativity to build up the country. But these hands are not finding enough opportunities. And this is what is the sorry state of affairs in this 50th year. Madam, I was very happy when my very esteemed colleague sitting on the treasury benches was talking. And he was saying that this is the time to solve several problems. I, I come from a state of Maharashtra. And these 50 years, I was fortunately born, or I was not so fortunate to be born before and could see the independence. I, I'm, I represent a generation which was born after the independence. And our generation was always waiting for solution of certain problems. I'll just take one, one small example of how the problems pending for several years, several decades have not been solved. Madam, our friend from Karnataka was talking about linking rivers, which again is still is a very important point. I'm going to highlight it again. But also, why not link the borders? Why not link the territory with the people who want to be with a state which is their own state they feel? And this border dispute between the state of Maharashtra and state of Karnataka could not be resolved for 50 years. And if we cannot solve a small little problem like this, I don't know how we are going to be in the world which is borderless. We think that the world is emerging as a global village, but few villages on that side of the border who are aspiring to be with the state of their own cannot be here. And I think this is what our youth is trying and asking whatever solutions we could find in this last 50 years. Madam, one of the points that we should always realize and remember before I proceed further, Madam, I must really emphasize one thing which has been highlighted by many of my esteemed colleagues in this very house and I am very happy about it. Madam, we cannot be a rootless society. We cannot be a society without roots. We must and cannot forget and everybody including our former Prime Minister when he was talking today for a very good amount of time was always referring to our ancient culture. Madam, I am very happy when we are looking into the future, we are not yet forgotten about it. But Madam, let us not forget culture or use it only as a debating point when we talk in the parliament. But let all our policies, the national policies, the entire foundation of our, cult our entire polity should be based on this ancient culture. And if you forget that, the past is past. If you forget, the future is not going to forgive us. Because again, the future is going to turn into past in not too long or not too distant a future. Madam, I was very happy when our Honourable Speaker gave a call for a second freedom struggle. I think when we are talking about a freedom struggle, as before 1947, we were all united. I don't think we are divided like this. There was no need to demarcate between different parties, different people, different creed, different culture, because we had only one common objective. We had an objective of winning independence. Again in 1962, when our borders were threatened and we had an aggression, from our so-called friend, we again were united. And same thing happened in 1965 and 1971 when we were attacked. So when there is a freedom struggle or when there is a war, we always believe that we cannot fight it unless we are united. Madam, if our Honorable Speaker sitting on this highest chair is giving us a call for a second freedom struggle, are we again willing, are we again prepared to forget our differences and join hands to win this struggle of freedom from certain ills that he has already highlighted, which I don't intend to repeat, because I feel they are already on the national agenda now, since he has highlighted. Can we think about the unity on this count, and as well as set the war goals? Because whenever you want to fight, when you want to fight a war, you always have war goals. When we went to war in 1971, our then Prime Minister, Indira Gandhi, had also set war goals that our refugees who have crossed the borders must go back and the people of Bangla, then Bangladeshi people must win the freedom. So what are the war goals that we would like to set for this is something which will determine as to how and to what extent we should go ahead and succeed in this new war and also the second freedom struggle. Madam, I think we all have noticed one very interesting phenomenon. 
Madam, there are my very good esteemed friends from Kerala. They would bear me out when I say this. That whenever an Indian goes abroad, he succeeds. And the same person comes back into India, he's branded as an unsuccessful person. Why cannot we introspect on this today? Why cannot we find, try to find out an answer to this problem? Why do we succeed outside and the same Indian coming back cannot really perform in the country? What is the wrong? If the person can man the NASA operation, but he comes back the, in, and tries to work in ISRO, finds it difficult to get a job. What is wrong with our system that we must all try to find out? Madam, I think the common man has a will to win this freedom struggle. But what he really needs is a strength. And the strength must come from the government, from this parliament, from all of us. And if you give him this strength, I think with his willpower and with his clearly set war goals, which I think partly are highlighted by our honorable speaker, we should be able to really be in this war. Madam, I always wonder that can we not keep certain things as something on which we'll never debate, never deliberate. We can always deliberate, but once we agree, we'll not try to temper with it. Madam, we have got a good example that there's a basic structure of our constitution which cannot be tempered with. Our highest court in the country, the Supreme Court, has always said on many occasions that a basic structure cannot be touched upon even by the parliament. Can we not set certain issues like this for population, which has been highlighted in terms of education, in terms of economic policy? Can we not determine and define certain common objectives which should be once agreed upon, once debated upon, and always would always form as a part of the national consensus is something which I think we must try to deal with this in today's session, the session which is supposed to be ending tomorrow. If we fail to do that, even if we want to fight this war, the goals may not be properly defined. And having defined a goal, if we don't focus ourselves on that properly, we will not be able to really get what we want. Madam, let, let me quickly, as I know, as a limitation of time, quickly go through what I feel should be also the part of the national agenda. Maybe I am trying to not redefine, but try to expand what is already said by our Honorable Speaker, as well as a veteran political parliamentarians like the leader of opposition, Honorable Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Madam, one of the things that we must try to work on is to reduce the cost of administration. Whatever new schemes we are launching, what are new ideas we are generating, the cost of administering it is becoming so heavy that the new states are being created, the bureaucracy is increasing, the government size is increasing, and as a result of which the administration cost is increasing, and the fruits of this, whatever programs we are implementing, is not reaching the common man. And I think we should really have this as one of the points. And while disagreeing with my friend, who is not present now in the house from Karnataka, when I talked about the border dispute, I would like to share one of the very important points that he said. To commemorate this occasion, this 58th year, what do we have? We can come out with a souvenir. We always we have been presented with a good memento by our honourable speaker. But can this be only commemoration item for the country? Can we not think about a national project which can be remembered for another hundred years? When we go to China, we see a Great Wall of China, and we try to say that this Great Wall of China defended China during the ancient time. We don't need any walls. When we are trying to break many, what we really need to do is to create a linkage of all the rivers in the country and try to use this as one of the symbols of national integration as well as a symbol to commemorate this 50th year of independence. Can we adopt a resolution in a time-bound program and create this project as a national project? Madam, imagine the number of jobs that will be created as a result of this. Today, only 30% of our land is irrigated. And that 30% of the land is somehow trying to provide food to millions of people who are born every day. Can we not think about creating new jobs and irrigating land which will also provide this food for so many new, new generation of people who are going to be born, born in the next few years? And it's a time also to find out in this last 50 years how much money we have spent on flood relief in Assam at the same time and also on the drought relief in Rajasthan at the same time. So can we not use all this pool of money that we wasted in the last 50 years and create this new national project, which could also be served as a bridge riverway, also stop migration of population from cities to the, from towns to the cities, from the villages to the city. 
Madam, another important point that I think all of us must somehow deliberate upon and try to resolve. And that is about in our constitution, we have provided for separation of power between these three different organs of state. There is a legislature, there is a judiciary, and there is also the sovereign parliament and executive. Madam, this separation of power was necessary as, as a counterbalance factor to ensure that no single organ asserts the power. But as a result of which now we are seeing that the legislation passed by the parliament and is it executed in some different fashion and the judiciary tries to interpret it in a third manner. Here can there not be a unity of action by these three different organs when we are trying to solve a national problem? Madam, we can take several examples in which some very well-meaning decisions have, could not be implemented, could not be ultimately stand before just the, the test of law only because all the three organs could not come together. So if 1947, we went in for separation of power between these three different organs, in 1997, can we think about a unity of action between these three different organs so that they can ultimately try to serve the common man Who's, for whose benefit all these three different organs are supposed to operate and not as sort of a counterbalance to defeat each other and try to find fault with each other's actions. Madam, <laughs> Madam, one of the points that I would like to say is is also <laughs> Madam, we have a multiplicity of laws and we have sure ki je. and we have been dhyan rakh rahi hu. Samay gin gin kar rakh rahi hu. Kripya beech mein interrupt na kijiye. Chaliye. Madam, we should also try to rationalize the multiplicity of laws that we have got. Madam, if a person wants to start a business, he has to cope with maybe not less than 100 laws of different types. Cannot think about a commercial law which encompasses all different laws. If a person, a laborer wants to really fight his case, cannot think about all the laws that we have, could be clubbed together. And also, in that fashion, we really try to reduce. When a citizen wants to be a really law-abiding, he can always be based on this one single book of law. He can always use it for the purpose of finding out how we can really follow this law. How much more time do you need? Haji, madam. You have already spoken for 15 minutes. Okay, madam, I'll just try to wind up. Madam, I would have also, but I let me, when I'm talking about the law, let me also try to wind up my speech because you're already telling me. But I'm also tempted to use another quotation of, not quotation, but a small little anecdote of Swami Vekan because my previous speaker also used him before winding up his speech. Madam, our great leader that time, Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru said that he wanted to redeem, he twist with destiny. Madam, our destiny has really brought us to this stage after 50 years. But now if at all we want to make a twist, this is the time to make a twist with karma. This is the time to use our entire workforce, our entire thinking power, our entire, all the resources available at our command to, and use them to make a nation, a powerful nation, make people what they're really worth of and not try to language them in poverty. And for that, we have to use karma as our real focal point. Madam, when we always talk about karma, people say that that makes a person who wants to really work, is refused to use his energy because karma believes in what is there in the destiny will get. Adam Swami Vivekananda was asked, and I'll wind up only by telling you this. Adam, he was asked once, if in Hindu mythology or your philosophy you believe that karma takes you to where you are supposed to be going, then why should anybody work? And he gave a small example. He said, there is a ship which is grazing in the ground. Its neck is tied to a tree with a long rope. If the ship feels that my neck is already tied to a rope, and I cannot do anything and just sits, can only eat a grass only next to maybe one feet from where it is sitting. But if it tries to get up, it can reach to a great extent and try to eat much more grass, but cannot go out of the ground because the neck is already tied. But it can take 
to a long distance, longer distance to the ex to extent to which the, the rope will allow it to go. And that is what we have to discover in this 50th year of independence. Our talent, our resources, how long it can take us, we are still not realized. So this is not the time to make a twist with destiny, but to make a twist with karma, madam. Thank you. Thank you.